What's up guys, StuDog here, welcome back to some more Duel McDuel commentary. We got AK Simtinko here at 1479, going up against Cloud Strife 189. Not the first time we've seen Cloud Strife, that's for sure. I mean, look at that experience, he got over 10,000 experience. Dueling Network Veteran, Dueling Book Veteran, it doesn't matter what the website is, because Cloud Strife, he lives and breathes the Yugimon. So it's going to be Mech Knight Invoked against Alter Guys, interesting. As we got to see that Ghost Ogre used in the previous turn to get rid of the Marionetter, but then was it still able to set um, a protocol, conveniently as double protocol. And you get to see that personal spoofing used during the end phase. Actually going to shuffle back the face up protocol, because that's just cute like that. And he's probably going to grab the multi faker here, and yep, because of that ruling, I believe this adds upon resolution, so you can still technically reveal it. Kind of reminds me of like the Star Seraphs, you know, something along the lines of the Star Seraphs, how you go summon the stick, reveal the chair, and then he, when you add the other chair, you can still technically special summon the other chair. So, I mean, um, yeah, very, very solid stuff. Going to go for the Meliseek here, and you know, this floats, so we can go for a Link Shogun and get a free search off this, and dang, you really get to see the power of Altergeist just with this new card right here, and this is just the heart and soul of this deck. Like the tour guy, the speedroid terror top. I mean, it's just the heart and soul of the entire deck. And I would not be surprised if Alter guys get a decent chunk of top spots at the next YCS. Like I'm saying, at least six to ten top spots. Because I mean, just at the regionals lately, have been winning regionals, top eighting regionals, definitely proving themselves to be a tier one contender. And you already know, whenever the next ban list comes out, there's no way this deck is actually gonna get hit. So, I mean, I expect um, Alter Guys to be a tier 1 deck for a long time to come. So, um, there's that Marionette Normal Summoned again. Gonna set a free manifestation, because, you know, that's totally fair. Link Summoned for the Hexia. And off the Melisic, I believe he added the, the Mario guy. All I see is Mario whenever I see this. God, Konami naming cards off of Super Mario. Like, seriously? <laughs> But look at these MLG plays, can target itself, I mean that's so good, I mean you don't even have to target another Alter Geist, you can literally just target itself and then revive the Multi-Faker from the graveyard, and then when this is summoned, you can special summon another Alter Geist from the deck, so let's see what he's going to go for here, has to be in offense mode, but doesn't really matter. He's going to go for another copy of itself, and they will be able to increase the attack of this Hexia by a whole bunch here. Since it does gain the attack of all other Altergeist monsters. Okay, so he's just going to go for the Silquitus here. As it's like that Magi Spectre Kieran can bounce stuff on your opponent's turn. and Just a very solid card. So, I'm not really in the mood to do this math. But let's see, and this is going to be 15 plus 12 plus 8. So that is 3,500 attack. Don't mind if I do. Get in there. 3,500 attack points, and okay, he's going to link someone further. Wow, he's actually going to link someone with the Hexia. And here is Prime Banshee. And I don't really see them go for this every single day. I mean, most of the time, the only monsters that Alter Guys summon from the extra deck, most of the time, is just Hexia and the Link Karibo. But um, here is this other Link monster guy, and... During your main phase, you can tribute one other Alter Geist monster, special summon Alter Geist from your deck to this zone. It points to this card is sent to the field of the graveyard. Target Alter Geist card in the graveyard, add it to your hand. Alright, fair enough. So, Simtinko is literally just going ham here. Like, dang, son. Both these guys got extremely high ratings, like over 1,400. That is definitely the top 50 on the entire ranked play chart here on duelingbook.com so there's that expensive Meliseek, this card has been going up in price a whole bunch lately how did you special summon that monster? I believe he used the link monster effect right? yeah it's like read read nigga read yeah. read n word read <laughs> Insert meme right now and get a copyright strike on my YouTube channel. I would probably do that. <laughs> should, should I add that in the 
in the video. I think I'll be way too lazy, unfortunately. Maybe I'll add it, maybe. Oh my god. Wow, I get to see a set mind control. This card is just so clutch. Attacks for that direct damage, gets to pop during the damage step, able to get rid of that mind control, and then the Prime Banshee was able to kill that blue sky. In main phase two, we can link summon with this monster for a link Karibo and then get a free surge, but he's just gonna opt not to do that. No real point. I mean he already got the spoofing on the field, he can just tag it out. Yes, of course, this is just Infestation Infection 2.0 right here. Yeah, that card was very, very good in Evil Storms. Making every single Evil Storm you top deck turn into a Kirky on late game. One of my favorite Evil Storm cards. I love the Infestation Infection. As good Evil Storm players over the years realized that searching that out over the pandemic was a lot better. Not in every single situation, but it seems like every time you went, you made an Opion, you always searched out that Pandemic. And then you realized, wait, I don't always have to go for Pandemic. Instead, I can get a card that can search any monster in my deck. And there's that swift game one victory from AK Semtinko. Showing the power of the Altergeist Cloud Strife, he literally did nothing that game. His blue sky got negated with an Ash Blossom. And... He... he you just couldn't do anything. So, anyway, thank you all for watching this first game. We're going to pause the video, wait for these guys to sign back, and we'll be right back with game number two. Alright, guys, welcome to game number two, Cloud Strife. Decides to let his opponent go first. That's kind of interesting, but looks like it's a decent option since he side decked a whole bunch of evenly matched, and there's that evenly matched used. And if that's your strategy, to just side deck three copies of evenly matched, and just hope you get it in like a 45 card deck, then I mean, I guess. So he's going to chain the personal spoofing, and that's actually really nice. Because he won't be forced to banish the monster that's on the field. Just going to tag it out for the multi-faker. Probably not going to summon the multi-faker. Yeah, that would be a pretty stupid thing to do. And he's just going to banish the personal spoofing in one other set card face down. Banish too, not bad, smiley face. Uh, I know, right? Not too shabby, not too shabby at all. So there's that magical meltdown activated in main phase two. And I can get a free Alistair and he can summon it, but thing is, he doesn't really have anything in the graveyards to fuse with. He wants to go for that invocation. So there's a protocol activated. This is the card that he set with the uh, Marionetta and. There you go. You can just easily trigger that multi faker. And this can bring out the Soquitas or the level 1 floater guy. And, mmm. Just such powerful plays, man. Now, this can just negate the Alistair's effect once it gets normal summoned. And this is not looking good for Cloud Strike again, despite, you know, only getting a plus 1 with that evenly match. I mean, that evenly match was not the end of the world at all for some tank I mean a lot of times against these decks that play a whole bunch of back row evenly match is just the nuts I mean it can be better than Exiton Knight in a lot of situations so yup he's gonna go for the Melaseek here hopefully I'm pronouncing this correctly <laughs> level 1 floater guy seems good and Cloud Strife just gonna throw his Alistair into the fire here you know that's gonna get negated and that's exactly what's gonna happen Oh, unless he got the Twin Twister. Still technically going to take a neg one on that Twin Twister, though. But, I mean, sure, I guess. Some Tinko will get a free search off that Melu. And let's see what he's going to be adding here, kids. Whatever will it be? <laughs> yeah, not really the best of plays. You got to take that neg one off the Twin Twisters. Not at all. Money will be able to get the free search of the Alistair here. And this is a water attribute, so we can go for the clutch water fusion if he's even playing it. Card is really good against Paleozoics. And it's just a very annoying card to deal with. The water invoked fusion. I don't even know its name because no one even summons it often enough for me to memorize the name because ain't nobody got time for that. Ooh, there's a spellbook of knowledge, so. Despite playing a 45 card deck, looks like Cloudstrife opened a phenomenal hand. I mean, he had the evenly match, he had two copies 
of Magical Meltdown along with the Spellbook of Knowledge just conveniently already in your hand. So, don't mind if I do. So, you now got four cards in hand to work with here. One of them is an Invocation. And again, if you are playing that Water Fusion, you can technically play the Invocation right now and go for that in face-up defense mode. I know can't be targeted, can't be destroyed by card effects, can attack by like... Uh, it can attack while it's in defense mode, I believe. I believe it has 2800 defense, 1800 attack, and it can attack while it's in defense. Something along the lines of that, but... Unfortunately, it looks like Cloudstrike does not play the Water Invoked Fusion. Feels bad, man. And now Semtinko is free to do whatever he wants. Assuming there's no hand traps from Cloudstrike. So there's that Mario. Yes, Mario. Super Mario Brothers up in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mario normal summoned. That's going to get a free plus one setting either protocol or the manifestation. Going to set another copy protocol here. Going to use its effect to kill off the multi-fiker to bring back the floater. We got a floater in the pool. I repeat, a floater in the pool. <laughs> Alright, you're gonna attack directly for 516. Main phase 2, Link Summon for the Hexia here. You get a free search off that Mellow again. He keeps spelling it wrong. He says like, me, me, Mele you? That's not how you spell it, but whatever. Yeah, it's actually not hyper. It's not M E L U E. I mean, he's spelling it M E L U E U. Wait, wait, what? E U. M E L. I don't know where you're getting that getting that spelling from, bro. Yeah, some Tinko. I have no idea where the frick you're getting that spelling from. Like, if you're if you're gonna abbreviate it, at least abbreviate it correctly. Like M E L E U. Like, really? <laughs> all right. But it looks like for the second straight game, some Tinko just has all the advantage here, and you gotta give Cloud Stripe some credit. I mean, he hasn't been misplaying at all. I mean, he had a nice strategy trying to get. At least a plus two off that evenly match. Unfortunately for him, he only got a plus one, and some Tinka was add that, able to add that free multi faker and flip over his protocol. And I mean, speaking of that play, he's doing that exact same play right now. Just gonna flip over that protocol and like standby phase and reveal that multi faker and just play on your opponent's turn. You know, I mean, reminds me of freaking Mermills and stuff. You just flip over that Abyss Spear and. Or like they'll um, they'll blind them to your abyss spear, you chain the abyss spear, they bring out the land, and then you bring out the the pike, and then you use the pike effect, pitch something, and just play on your opponent's turn. That's what the cool kids do. All right, so they're gonna bring out the so Quetus here, and here's a mind crush played upon the resolution of this. Gonna call invocation, of course. And now you get a nice long look at that hand. Unless a ban list came out right at this very second, that limited invocation at one on the ban list. Even that wouldn't work, because this technically would be in the old format. But I mean, yeah, you're going to take a nice long look at that hand. His invocation is not limited at one on the ban list. You wish it was, so. Some Tinko, he has all the knowledge. He can take a screenshot of his opponent's hand. He can write it down in his handy dandy notebook or something. You know, Blue's Clues style. Handy dandy notebook. And there's that instant fusion activated. Hmm, if only Norden was a card. Where's the Norden when he needed, man? So I believe he's gonna go for. I don't really know what accomplishes anything, because this can just bounce this right back. So there's that Thousand Eyes Restrict. So what? This is just gonna get bounced, right? Okay, he's actually going to let the effect go. No, okay. It took him long enough to, to use the effect. I mean, you're going to lose your guy either way, so you might as well just bounce it. So, Thousand Eyes Restrict will go back to the extra deck. Can bounce that multi-faker back to the hand where it belongs. And, yeah. Um, let's, let's see. <laughs> it says you... Can't activate cards due to Magical Meltdown's effect. 
What if? <laughs> hey, what do you mean? The activation of your cards and effects that include the effect of fusion summon of a fusion monster cannot be negated. Cannot activate when a fusion. Wait, wait, wait. Opponent cards and effects cannot activate when a fusion summon this way. Oh, okay. So we actually cannot do that. I thought that only had to be to invoked fusions. Oh, man, that's just any old fusion? Wow. <laughs> well, I never knew that. I thought this had to specifically be an invoked fusion. So you can just summon any old random fusion and your opponent can't respond. Well, I guess that's cute. Don't really know how that's actually going to win you the game, but I mean, sure, I guess. <laughs> so he's going to take control of his opponent's so Quit is here. And we got some more thinking, because I mean why wouldn't we think? We already went through that we can't negate the guy's effect, and yet we're still thinking. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Hmm. But anyway, I guess while we wait and go check out this watchers chat, oh yeah. Who do we got up in here? The old rip clips. Remember this guy's username from DN, believe it or not. We got Air Knight. Heligon? I believe I'm pronouncing that Hel Heligon. We got Necrobuzz along with Siege Lord. Oh, yeah. Siege Lord. And unfortunately, no one's really saying anything in this watcher's chat. That sucks. Okay, so he's gonna chain the effect now. And this will go to the graveyard, right? Because the effect still technically goes through. Okay, okay, I'm sure. So this will get its effect once it hits the graveyard, adding the protocol back to the hand. Seems good. And Cloud Strife is not yet normal summon, believe it or not. It's been a pretty long turn. And, yep, that's just going to be a wrap. I'm going to use Protocol, kill off the Exia to negate the Alistair, and, I mean, Cloud Strife, he literally wasn't able to do anything in that match. And that was just a swift 2-0 from AK, AK Simtenko, and I was just about to hover over his rating to see if he got to 1500, but, unfortunately, couldn't really do that. I don't know, did he, did, did he, go, did he go to the Promised Land, guys? Oh, I could just um, do that, I guess. Oh, that's not his name. I thought I copy and pasted it. Oh my god, what the frick am I doing? I wanted to see if he actually made it to 1500 rating. Uh, let's check out his profile. Oh, so close to 1500 rating. Feels bad, man, but, um, you know, he technically is the 14th best duelist on DuelingBook.com. I mean, come on, he, he played that so well, guys. And he's from Venezuela. Uh, last time I checked, Venezuela is not really in the best of states in, when it comes to countries around the world, but... I don't want to get into the technical details about that. But anyway, thank you all for watching this episode of Dueling with Dual Commentary. As always, in the end, a swift 2-0 from Alter Guys, showing the power of that deck. So, thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Stew Dog, and I'm signing out.